I've been streaming for almost five years at this point, and in the last five years, there's been a lot of brand new streaming gear that's been released by various companies. And a lot of this streaming gear has made different aspects of streaming easier and easier and better and better. It's up to the quality while also making the amount of effort that goes into streaming a lot less. So in today's video, we're gonna cover my top 10 best pieces of streaming gear list. And this is not gonna be the most premium expensive stuff or the most budget friendly. It's just gonna be some of the best stuff that's on the market right now that will make streaming a lot more fun and a lot easier than it was originally. Also, this video is being recorded at the end of 2021 as we move into 2022. So the purpose of this is not only to give you a bunch of advice and a bunch of, you know, streaming gear that I think would be really beneficial to you, but also to kind of put a little mark in time as we move into 2022 and the rest of the future to see what stuff comes out and develops from this point. Maybe some of these things get replaced by better options in the future, or maybe some of these things continue to be the top dogs in their area for a while. So let's jump into it, check out the list, and hopefully this will give you some ideas for your streaming setup. Before we jump into the list of the gear that we're going to be talking about today, I do want to tell you one of the best options for graphic design, logo design, animations, all that sort of thing, and it happens to be the sponsor of today's video, Placeit.net. Placeit has thousands of mockups and templates for stream overlays, Twitch panels, logos, merch, YouTube end screens, animations, and so much more. Once you find the template you're looking for, you can customize colors, text, and other elements to make the perfect design creation. After that, download it and it's completely yours to use however you want with full commercial license. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars on design work, you can purchase a monthly or yearly subscription to place it and get unlimited downloads. Just use my 15% off discount link in the description below. So if you're looking for a logo for your stream or overlays, graphics, logo animations for your YouTube videos, whatever it may be, check out Placeit, you guys. Make sure you use my link in the description for 15% off. We love Placeit. They've been a longtime sponsor, so huge thank you to them for continuing to sponsor these videos. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the list of the top 10 pieces of gear for streamers. And I'm gonna be showing these devices on Amazon. And I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you wanna support this channel, then uh, check out all the links in the description of this video. But we're gonna be taking a look at them on Amazon. Most of these pieces of equipment I have personally used. Some of them I haven't, but I'll tell you why they're still on the list when we get there. And hopefully this is gonna be a beneficial list for you guys as we go through. So let's take a look. So here we are on Amazon and we've got our very first piece of gear. And guys, I'm telling you right now, if you're getting into streaming or you're a brand new streamer trying to figure out what mic to get, and you're looking for a simple all-in-one package USB microphone option, this is the one right here, guys. Elgato Wave 3 Premium, okay? Elgato makes some of the best streaming gear, and you'll actually notice that a lot of the stuff on this list is Elgato because they make some of the best streaming gear that there is right now, and this microphone is the best USB microphone at this point in time, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why very briefly. This microphone not only has a bunch of options on it, like for instance, uh, you can control your you know volume input into your head headphones and things like that. You, it's got a mute button on the very top, which uh, if you look right here, you can see there's the mute button. Um, it talks about, you know, it's capacitive mute features and all this kind of stuff. But on top of that, Elgato actually has this right here, which is an all-in-one streaming software package that comes with this microphone. Now, the microphone sounds very, very good by itself, uh, but the software that comes with the microphone makes this microphone stand out uh, against all of the other competition. The reason why is because if you look right here, you can see that you can actually control with the software that comes with this microphone, different aspects of your stream. So for instance, your game audio, your uh, Discord audio, your music audio, and you can decide what goes into your headphones, what goes out to the stream. You can change the volume of everything. It makes the Elgato Wave much more versatile than just a USB microphone that you plug directly in and you just get audio, right? So not only can you hear yourself talk through the microphone, and can you hear everything that's going on, but you can actually adjust the volume through their software, which is something that none of the other USB microphones really have, not to this level anyway. There's a few that are starting to come out that are, are working on this, but in my opinion, the Elgato Wave is the best sounding with the most features, and it's gonna give you the best overall experience if you're looking for a USB microphone. 
Now, on top of the Elgato Wave, if you are looking for a USB microphone, uh, this is going to be the, the one to go with. But if you're looking for something beyond a USB microphone, a little bit more intensive like an XLR microphone, there is one option in my opinion, and that's going to be the Go XLR. Now, I will tell you guys right now, the Go XLR is a more expensive device coming in at $491 right now currently on Amazon. But the benefit of the GoXLR is not only do you get a physical device that gives you all kinds of options. I mean, you've got your, your physical faders that you can use to control your audio on the fly while you're streaming. You can actually mute in each one of these buttons. This will mute the actual track. These are motorized. So when you mute, it goes down. When you press the mute button again, it goes right back to where you left it originally. Uh, you can assign everything like your mic, your music, uh, Discord, your game audio, anything else you want to different tracks within the GoXLR and actually even more than this. There's four right here on the main unit of the GoXLR, but you can actually assign even more than that because software comes with this as well. And GoXLR actually has some of the best software on the market for controlling audio. So this gives you your control of audio, plus it gives you a whole entire effects panel so you can change the effects of your voice to be really high pitched, really low pitched with lots of echo, reverb, whatever you wanna do. You even have a sound pad down here. So the sound pad gives you uh, the ability to assign like a, a sound effect and you can press that button and it's going to play that sound effect instantly and so i've got a i've got a go xlr set up right now and if i you know say some kind of corny joke or something i can press a button and you can hear you know a, a drum roll right <laughs> or a uh boom ching like type of thing right so like the go xlr gives you a bunch of features but it comes in at 491 dollars it's not a very cheap product right uh and that's for good reason it's actually got everything you need in one package even for some of the higher end microphones like the sure sm7b which is a really big gain hog you've got to have a lot of power to power that microphone this has i, I believe it's 70 decibels of gain built in clean audio gain inside of this go xlr which gives you the ability to push the sm7b or the electro voice re20 or some of these other dynamic microphones you can push them no problem you don't have to buy any extra stuff um and everything it's got a bunch of inputs on the back everything you could possibly need from inputs for your microphone to inputs from your computers you can run a double you know two streaming pc setup with this you can plug your uh your um, gaming device right into this and on top of that you can even run extra lines out of this if you want to put it into you know another device like a, a mixer board or something like that so anyway go xlr is my choice the top choice for audio devices but if the 491 dollars is a little steep for you they actually have the go xlr mini which is a smaller version of the main unit it only has the tracks and the mute buttons and whatnot um, and, and not any of the sound effects, but this still has the software that you can use on the back end to equalize your voice, to set everything, to, you know, assign all of your tracks. So the Go XLR Mini comes in at $249.24. Uh, so if you want something that's a little bit more cost effective, then um, I would uh, go with that one. But either one of these devices is going to give you the best possible setup to make streaming as easy as possible. There's a lot of streaming devices out there, or a lot of audio devices for streaming out there. But in my opinion, this is the one. It's been specifically designed for streamers and until somebody can compete with this Go XLR is really where it's at. All right, next on the list, if you have a Go XLR and you need a microphone to put in it, you might be saying, well, what microphone do I use? My top recommendation for a more budget-friendly microphone is actually the Rode Pod Mic. It's a great microphone. It's built like a tank. It's solid. It sounds great, and it's a dynamic microphone. Now, for those of you who don't know the difference between dynamic and condenser, basically, condenser microphone picks up more of your room. It's uh, it's meant for more of like treated areas, and a dynamic microphone is more focused on picking up your voice. So it helps. Uh, it helps cut out background noise and echo and things like that. So unless you're streaming from a very treated, you know, acoustically treated room or something like that, I would recommend going with a dynamic microphone. The pod mic is my recommendation for one that's a little bit more bud budget friendly. It sounds great for 99 bucks. You can't go wrong. But if you're saying, you know what, I, I have a little bit, a little bit more of a budget. I've got more to spend. I want something that's going to be a little higher tier, maybe a, you know, end game microphone. Then my recommendation for that is going to be the Electro Voice RE20. Uh, 
Uh, now this is the microphone that you actually hear right now and this is running into a go xlr setup that we were just talking about uh and i've been using this setup for a while now and i absolutely love it the sound of this microphone this is the actual microphone they use in most radio stations or at least a lot of radio stations in a lot of podcasts that you listen to if you're listening to that really high end uh you know more boomy rich uh kind of broadcasty voice the electro voice re20 has been around for years and it has been an absolute staple in the industry now it normally looks like this it's actually a kind of this grayish color this is the traditional look and they've more recently come out with the electro voice uh re20 in the black matte version and this is the one that you see here me using i love it i put a, a pop filter kind of windscreen on the front of it here which they do make this that you can put on there and helps kind of cut down on the plosives and of course spitting on the mic and stuff like that because it happens when you're talking all the time but this microphone right here 449 bucks it's actually on sale right now on uh on amazon it's the probably the top option i'm not really worried about getting another mic now that I have this one. I know there's much more expensive mics out there and you can, you know, take your audio to, you know, infinity and beyond. But for streaming, this is about the top level that you need to go in order to really get that fullness and richness. The SM7B is another great microphone, but between the two, personally, I actually like the sound of this one better. So that's why it's on the list for the higher tier microphone. Um, but those are my two recommendations to go into the Go XLR and either one of those mics, the Rode Pod mic or the Electro Voice RE20 are going to sound fantastic. Now, for your microphone, you're going to need a mic arm. And this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily always think about. But there's, you know, cheap mic arms on Amazon for, you know, 15, 20 bucks. And I actually used one of those for a little while, for a year or two. And I'll be honest, it can work for you. And if you want to save some money, you can do that. But I upgraded to this right here, the Rode PSA1 mic arm and this boom arm literally changed the game for me you guys i can move this microphone anywhere that i want and it stays perfectly there i don't have to adjust anything i don't have to tighten anything i don't have to you know mess with anything on the mic arm it just works and it works very very well uh, as soon as I upgraded from a $20 mic stand to this mic stand, it was a night and day difference. And this is something that a lot of people don't always think about. But if you are streaming, the last thing you want to be doing is sitting there tightening up, you know, one of those old, traditional old mic arms with like the springs on the side and stuff like that. You just don't want to mess with that. So I recommend getting this one. Spend the money. $99 for this is a great deal. And you will not regret it because it will literally take that entire dynamic of your microphone, moving it around, and it will make it a no-brainer, right? You won't have to be sitting there thinking about it or tightening it up or trying to adjust it, not really getting what you need. This thing works wonders. So highly recommend this. There is an updated version of this that I will show you that they just came out with. This is the Rode PSA 1 Plus. And this mic arm com comes with a few extra features. Like uh, for instance, they have these uh, covers that go over the actual mic arm versus the original that has just the uh, kind of metal bars exposed. And then you'll notice for cable management, they have these ties on the original one, the one that I'm using. But on the new one, they they actually have a mic cable management system that clips the cable along the back of the mic here so it kind of keeps it out of the way and you don't have to tie everything down with those little velcro uh strips now the other update that they've made to this mic arm if you want to spend 30 dollars more and get the the updated model is that on the original you'll notice that these uh these right here those little uh tightening knobs for the microphone to keep it up the, these right here these are metal on the original one and they're kind of they're kind of hard to like loosen and tighten sometimes i'll be honest uh not a game changer once you get it tightened down where you want it it's not a, a big deal but on the new one they updated those knobs to be kind of a rubbery plastic and they're round so they actually uh work in my opinion much better at least they look like they would it's kind of an updated little rig system right here and this looks way more comfortable than the silver metal ones not a huge deal, but in my opinion, if you're if you got the extra budget, go ahead and get the updated version. You're not going to go wrong either way, though. These both are going to work fantastically, and I highly recommend either one of these mic arms as what holds your microphone. Now, moving from the microphone, we move into, because we all know audio is one of the most important parts of a stream, but video, the visual element of your stream is also very important. So we're moving into the video segment. And guys, this is my number one recommendation for webcams. Now, I have not personally used the Elgato face cam, but I will tell you right now, there are a few things about this face cam that make it the number one webcam option for streamers. Uh, first of all, I've looked at other reviews and I've looked at people who have used it. And I've looked at comparisons 
comparisons of videos between this camera and a lot of other webcams in its class. And I've got to tell you, as far as low light performance, color reproduction, and uh, overall functionality, the Elgato face cam is number one. It looks clearer, it looks better, the lens on this thing is fantastic, and the way this thing is designed is specifically for streamers on Twitch or YouTube. They don't have a microphone in this camera, so you're not going to get it to do, you know, just webcam audio conferencing and stuff like this. This is going to be specifically for people who are wanting to stream and they've got a mic set up, they've got the audio taken care of, and now they need the video. Now, one of the things that makes this so awesome is that Elgato, as with the Elgato Wave microphone, also includes an amazing uh, package of software that comes with this face cam and it gives you the ability in the software to do all kinds of crazy stuff. For instance, like you can... Uh, you know adjust all of the different different elements, you know how you know the exposure the saturation uh, You know sharpness all that kind of thing, but also you can you can You know raise and lower your ISO which is the low light performance Digitally that the camera is able to do and this camera performs very well in low light But you can actually adjust that that ISO uh, or the ISO whatever you want to call it to the perfect point for you and for your room. So uh, this gives you that functionality and what's the most beautiful thing about this webcam, not only does it look the best on the market right now, but it's got a feature that literally changes the game for webcams. One of the most annoying things of all webcams that I've ever used is that when you go in and you adjust your settings for the webcam, unless they have some kind of software, right? You adjust the webcam settings and then when you turn your computer off and turn it back on and you reboot OBS, you've got to adjust all of the settings again. If you adjust them through OBS, you might be able to do it in the OBS filters option, but the filters option is actually kind of limited, so it's not the most ideal. But Elgato has changed that because in their software, you can adjust all the settings that you want, make the camera look perfect, and then you can press a save button, and it will save all of those settings, not to your computer, not to the software, but to the actual camera itself. So you save the settings that you like the best, for your camera and then you can take that webcam and you can plug it into any computer you don't even need the software anymore and the camera is going to look exactly how you set it and you saved it the last time that you had adjusted it so this prevents you from having to run any software in the background in fact i use uh some other webcams that do have software, but the software has to be running in order for the settings for those webcams to actually be saved. And it's very annoying because when that software updates or maybe I reboot my computer and the software doesn't auto launch or something like that, the webcam looks terrible. I'll, I'll get into my stream, I'll switch to that camera and then my, my stream looks terrible and I've got to sit there and adjust it on uh, you know, my stream live versus the Elgato where you know once you set it and it looks the way you want, Anytime you have that webcam going into OBS because the settings are saved right to the webcam, you don't have to worry about it. So that feature alone is amazing. And then when you add that on top of it being one of the best looking webcams and of course having the software that allows a lot of detailed functionality, Elgato has again blasted it out of the park and this is the best webcam on the market currently. Now, if you're moving from a webcam and you want to get into a, a DSLR, a nicer camera like the one that you're looking at right now, this is a DSLR, I'm recording this video through OBS, through a DSLR, uh, then you can pick one of many different cameras out there, any DSLR you want to use that has a clean HDMI out, but to capture that DSLR and to make it look fantastic into OBS, the secret guys and the best device in my opinion for this is the Elgato Cam Link 4K. Now, this is one of the best uh, capture cards as far as simplicity and just consistency. This thing goes for $98.65 on Amazon. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. It doesn't have any other functionality other than capturing an HDMI input and then putting that into your computer. And it's actually got, uh, it can do 1080, 60, uh, as far as its quality, so 1080p at 60 frames a second um, or 4K at 30 frames a second. It uses USB 3.0. It's fantastic. I've had one of these and I've never had any issues. In fact, even some of Elgato's other capture cards I've had issues with as far as, uh, you know, the internal capture cards I've installed and things like that. But when it comes to my, uh, my actual DSLR, what you're watching right now, this is being captured through one of these cam links and I've never had an issue with it. It has worked flawlessly. It's a workhorse. It completely uh, you know, run smoothly and doesn't have any issues. And for $98, guys, it's actually 30 bucks off right now on Amazon. So you can check out that link in the description. But this is the way to go. So if you want to use a DSLR of some sort, and there's a lot out there. So we're not going to talk about the best DSLR because that's all going to be kind of subjective to everybody's opinion. Is it subjective or objective? 
whatever it is you guys know what i'm talking about it's going to be based on your opinion so this right here is the way to capture whatever dslr you choose to go with now moving on to the next thing the Elgato Stream Deck, and I've actually got the XL pulled up here, but guys, the Elgato Stream Deck is the number one streaming device. Now, there are some other Stream Deck type devices out on the market, and they are great. They all have different features and, and you know pros and cons, but when it comes to the overall performance and ease of use and things like that, in my opinion, the Elgato Stream Deck is the number one option, and I'll tell you why. There's a few different reasons. One, Elgato has built in an ecosystem of other devices like lights that you can use with the stream deck very easily and like for instance my lights that i'm lighting myself with right now if i wanted to i could turn these off with my stream deck and that's what i just did i turned my lights off with my stream deck because elgato has their El elgato key light system and that blends with your stream deck so not only do you have that functionality and that that uh you know ease of use between the multiple products that Elgato makes, but the Stream Deck just runs smoother than any of the other options. It plugs in via USB. You've got an awesome software program that is super easy to use. It's super easy to set up and it's super easy to adjust. So because of the ease of use of the Stream Deck and because they have multiple options, so they have a 32 key option for 249 bucks. They also have the 15 key option, which is the one that I use. It's 15 keys rather than 32. Uh, and it depends on what you think you'll need, but this is a beautiful thing because you can set this up with multiple folders and it basically acts like a 32 key if you want it to because you can just change to whatever folder you need and this allows you to control your entire stream you can control your scenes your overlays you can control you know animations uh you can mute your mic you can turn on your music you can do whatever you want with the stream deck it is absolutely fantastic and it will make streaming so much easier than trying to set up a bunch of hotkeys on your keyboard through obs you can set up your stream deck and have one button you can even press one button to do multiple things it's got things called multi actions so stream deck is my number one choice there's other options out there as well but i think that overall because of the ease of use and everything else stream deck by elgato is really the number one choice beyond the stream deck the last thing i have on my list is what everything sits on all right your whole entire streaming setup sits on a desk and sometimes we often overlook the desk aspect of our stream in fact originally when i started streaming i started streaming on a lifetime table one of those plastic big lifetime tables that you may see in a classroom somewhere or something like that and uh, it worked really good for a while i loved it the table was awesome it was cheap it was 50 bucks but uh, it was kind of limited. It, it, it had no adjustment. I couldn't make it any higher. I couldn't make it any lower. Uh, when I got all my heavy stuff on top, it would start bowing a little bit. When I hit the desk, it shook because it wasn't really a sturdy desk for really heavy equipment to be on it, like four monitors and that sort of thing. So I ended up upgrading to a new desk. And the new desk that I upgraded to and the one that I recommend you check out if you're in the market for a new desk is this one right here. This is the Uplift desk. Uh, now, Uplift makes standing desks, motorized standing desks. And if you're a streamer and a content creator, you're gonna spend a lot of time at your computer. I highly recommend you consider doing a standing desk. Now, this is a big purchase, and this is probably not the first or even, you know, uh, even after a few years of streaming purchase that you need to make. But I will say this, because streaming takes a toll on you because you sit down a lot, there is something to be said with being able to stand up. It is so nice to press one button on an uplift desk and for that desk to be able to go to whatever height you want it to be and even when you're doing cable management or you're trying to get behind your desk or things like that you can raise it up to an extremely high level and you can you can put a chair under your desk when i was cable managing my desk i just raised it up i had a chair under there and i was able to cable manage while sitting there in comfort and it was a lot easier than uh the normal having to crawl under the desk and sit there and be in a weird awkward position and then you know your back aches for like a week and a half right it's just one of those things that really changes the game and and if you're going to invest in your content or you're at that point in your content creation where you're taking it more seriously, a really nice desk is going to be a good option. So I went with Uplift Desk. There are other options out there that are cheaper than Uplift if you're looking for a standing desk. But one of the things that Uplift does really well is they make very high quality designs and use very high quality materials. The one that I have right here that I will link down in the description of this video is their Uplift Desk V2. Uh, it's a two-legged up, uh, a two-legged motorized desk with a bamboo top. In fact, they have a bunch of different tops you can choose, but this is a real bamboo wood desk top, and they make it in a 42-inch wide or an 80-inch wide. If you want to spend uh, around $1,000, you can get an 80-inch wide desk, which is what I'm actually using is an 80-inch by 30-inch, and this thing has both of my computers, four monitors, all of my keyboards, and my GoXLR, and my mixer board, and Stream Deck, and everything 
everything on it, including a giant gaming mouse pad. It's all sitting on top of one desk because I got that 80 inch long. Uh, now I will tell you, you don't have to get a big desk like that. If you want to put your computers on the ground or something like that, or maybe you're only doing a single PC setup instead of two, uh, you could go with a 42 inch and that would work just fine. You probably also don't need four monitors. Um, I had those for very specific use case at one point in my stream, but an 80 inch long will give you plenty of space for everything you could ever want, right? Uh, and because the desktop is bamboo, it's going to have a really nice quality, but they also make a bunch of different options. So if this is not the desk for you, or you just want to see what Uplift does besides the ones that are on Amazon, if you go to upliftdesk.com, uh, you can actually see all the different options and they have a bunch of stuff over here on their website. You can't see all of it because my screen is over it. But uh, anyway, come check upliftdesk.com. I am not an affiliate with them or anything. I'm just giving you guys this information so that you can uh, go check out what they have because I really believe in this desk uh, because I've loved mine ever since I got it and I have not looked back. I've got everything. I've got, uh, you know, custom setup power strip on the bottom that I installed because it's a real wood desk. So I was able to drill holes, install the power strip, and now all my cables are plugged in under the desk without any cables hanging down. So uh, anyway, check it out, you guys. Uplift Desk. This is my number one recommendation for desks, standing desks especially. Uh, they are expensive, but if you're putting more time and, and effort into your content and you're investing, this is a really good way to do it. So guys, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. This is the top 10 pieces of streaming equipment that I recommend. And at this point in time, end of 2021, into 2022, I think that these are probably some of the best options. They're going to give you the most flexibility, the most consistency, and also make streaming a breeze, or at least make a lot of the technical aspects of streaming a breeze. Streaming still is kind of hard and it takes a lot of effort and skill and practice, but with these things, hopefully you can take your mind off of all of that and put it more into the content that you're creating. So check out all of this stuff. Links in the description of this video. If you want to support the channel, those are all affiliate links and I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you've got any questions about this stuff or any opinions about this or have even suggestions for other pieces of equipment we should check out, leave a comment down in the comment section of this video. Let me know about it. I'd love to uh, talk about it or at least hear some of your thoughts. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you smack that thumbs up button for me and get this video out to more people. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for me. I'd greatly appreciate it. And we would love to have you in the community. On top of that, you can come talk to me about this stuff anytime on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Eagle Garrett. We play games over there. We talk about streaming, equipment, all that kind of good stuff. So we'd love to have you. We also have a wonderful Discord community at discord.gg slash flock. So make sure you join the community. Jump on in there. It is a great time over in our discord and last but not least we do have all of the social media so you can check out links for that in the description as well twitter being my number one so if you really want to you know reach out to me tweet at me because that's probably the best way to do it but guys with that being said thank you so much for watching rock on peace out god bless and last but not least cacao Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, bro. This guy waited and he didn't realize it was, I was going to, I was coming and he was trying to wait and then steal it at the last second right in front of me. And I made it before him. I made it before him. How insane is that?